Hello everyone and welcome to a new video of the Mastering Magica Voxel course. Today we're gonna talk about samples, so let's get started. The first thing I will do is give you a very quick scene tour. So if we go out of the render mode, you will see that we have here a bunch of layers made for us to test the different things. But I also added a bunch of uh, objects for you to have a little render to play with, to try materials, to change the colors and get used to Magica Voxel in general. So if you render this, this is how the scene looks. And if you want to get this scene, you can download it in the description of this video. I will leave that for you to play, but now let's focus on the other things that I added to the scene that are more of testing objects, right? So we have a metal floor, a wooden floor, and two objects that will help us uh, test the different things. So to start testing, I will turn on the wooden floor and then I will go ahead to the render button. So as you can see, out of the box, we start getting uh, something here. Just to show you, I will zoom out and you can see that is a big plane of light entering through a hole, which is in here, into the room. There's no other lights, no sun, no HDRI, nothing. It's just one light entering through a window. So if we load our camera, we're gonna get this view, camera zero. Uh, and I have another camera, camera one, that is used to, to see the ground texture. But let's start with camera zero. So let's start by seeing what do we have within the sample panel right here. If you open the bounce settings, you will see a bunch of numbers here. So these numbers, I will explain it very briefly because it's very technical. Basically, the bounces that this panel is referring to is the bounces of the light and how that affects your scene. So this plane of light is emitting photons of light. So you see how from it photons come out and they start bouncing around the scene. You see that underneath there's very little amount of light because this is a one voxel thick panel. So then that means that right underneath it, there's only one voxel producing light, but there's all of these other voxels producing light forward and backwards. And that's why it produces more light on both sides. Now, these photons of light will hit on the ground or whatever objects on the scene, and it will bounce in different directions randomly. So if we go now back to our camera zero, Photons of light will enter this window and start hitting on the walls, the roof, and on the ground. And you see that those are the places that we see the most light. Some of those photons will bounce backwards and hit a bit on this wall. So you see that this wall right now looks pretty dark, but there is some light on it. The amount of times a photon will bounce around your scene is determined by the diffuse value. So right now it's only two bounces. That means one bounce against the ground or the walls and then one bounce in a random direction. If we start putting this number higher up, your scene will start getting a bit more light because those photons are just bouncing everywhere. Consider that every time they bounce, they lose a bit of energy. So the second bounce will be not lighting your scene as much. If we remove this completely and put it on zero, you'll see that the program won't produce any bounce and this wall will be completely dark. As soon as we introduce one bounce, it gets some light, two bounces get some more light, but this is not infinite. In fact, the higher you go, the less you will notice the difference. And I prepared this little document just to show you this quicker instead of me just rendering everything over and over. So this is our default scene. This is two diffuse, five specular and one, e one energy. These are the default values that you have here. 2551. So if I let this render for enough time, I think on these renders I also had my light here to 100%. So if you do that, you will get the same result. So we have some light from an HDRI2. Good. So this is the result that you will get 2 diffuse, 5 specular, 1 energy. If I change it and I add 5 diffuse instead of 2, you see that you have some extra lighting on this back wall. But if I go all the way to 15, the change is almost impossible to see. So going over five diffuse is pointless. Also consider that the more samples you add, the slower your scene will render. Now, there's another value that is interesting. That is the energy value. If you change this to five, every photon will start with more energy. So then the second bounce will be a bit brighter and so on. This will make it that if we change from 15 diffuse and one energy to 15 diffuse and five energy, you see that there is quite a bit of a brighter result. 
So this is the difference. It looks like the window is moving, but that's just because this edge is becoming brighter and that creates a bit of a weird effect. With five energy, that's the difference. Now, if I change it to 15 energy, you see that again, the change is so small that it's almost pointless to make it. Then we have scatter and this again won't change much. I made some tests for you to see. We have this scatter material on a box that you can find it on the scene by turning on the test models. This has a scatter material and this has a glass material and we're going to talk about it in a second. So if you render this, you have them there. So this is a test I made removing the walls. So this box is hollowed. So that's why you can see this border. And this is the material with five scatter. If I turn 15 scatter, you see that doesn't change anything. So is, there's not really a point to be changing that. Don't worry about it. And then we have also a scatter for the clouds. So if you have, so if you have a cloud, this is how it looks with transparent shadows and five scatter bounces. If you add more scatter, you see that it doesn't really change, but it, what, what it does make a change is the MIS that is right here in samples. You can have the MIS scatter. So if you turn this on and you have a cloud shader, you will get a different effect. You see that the light becomes a bit more present within the cloud. And then if you change it to 15, you see it doesn't change anything. I'm talking about the scatter bounces. If you change it to 15, looks the same. So keep it low so your scene doesn't take longer to render. Furthermore, I prepared a metal shader for you. So if you turn off the wooden floor and you turn on the metal floor, I will turn off my objects here. You will see that this is a very reflective kind of metallic ground. So if we change to camera number one, and again, you can try all of these things on your own. If you download the scene, you can test this on your computer. This is how it looks out of the box. And this is the render that that produces is right here. This is the result that you will get. It's not bad, but if we turn on this button here that says MIS reflect, we will get a totally different result that looks like this. So this is the difference between one and the other. And you have the metal shader plus the MIS reflections. And this will basically render your reflections better. So it will be a bit slower, but I think this is one that is worth having. This is the multi importance sampling reflections. And in my opinion, it is worth it. So try it for yourself and get your own conclusions. Great. Moving on, we have the test shader. So I will turn back on my wooden floor and my test models, and I will load again my camera zero. And this basically will get you these results. Now, I'm showing you this because there is the TR shadow that I mentioned before, but just to have it all in one video, you will notice that the shadow of this ball of glass is right now dark and it doesn't have much color. But if you turn on TR shadow, this basically stands for transparent shadows. So that will make it so the light will penetrate this object and cast a shadow that is not so dark. It's basically a transparent shadow. So you see that it looks much better now that it's rendering. And so if I turn it back off, you see that the shadows start becoming darker and darker. So this is very important to have on when you're rendering glass materials. So the last, the last thing of this sample, and I promise this is the last hyper technical thing that we're going to talk about, uh, is the sparse button. This is used, and I will make really quickly an example for you. If I had just these three objects and I went to duplicate them a lot, you will notice that I will use this tool here just to duplicate them a bunch of times. And if I try to render this, if at first it will not take very long and you see that it's not rendering all of them. It's rendering it on a way that is cutting after, after a while. Uh, it's pretty random, uh, but that's how the program optimizes your scene. And if you wanted to have a very large scene with a lot of voxels, something you can do is click on the sparse button here where it says geometry. And this will be much slower to render, but you will get as a result, all of your voxels rendered. So right now my computer is thinking about it and there you have it. So once it started doing it, it's not so slow, but well, yeah, that, that's how you do it. Something that I will take the opportunity to show you is that this is a very specific case, but if you had several objects made out of glass, one after the other, you see that every time you see through them, it becomes darker and darker, and then you don't really see it becomes black. This is because your specular bounces are too low. If you increase the amount of samples here, let's say 15, 
you will notice that Magica Voxel becomes able to start rendering through more and more glasses. Think of this as a, a photon of, of light hitting a wall of glass, going through it and hitting the next one. That's two bounces. So if you want to get through another glass, you need two more for the next two walls of glass and so on. So the more you have here, the more glass you will be able to render. Now, something you need to notice is that you can only go all the way to 15. So you cannot have more than 15 sheets of glass, one behind the other. So this video was very technical, so I will stop here. Otherwise, it will be too long, too boring. And on the next one, we're going to talk about the display panel that is much more fun and that has very cool options for your render. So stay tuned for that next video and see you on the next one.